Hello and welcome to Labour Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week's edition of the program, we're focusing on the World Work Descent Day. We also have interesting news stories for you. We will be right back. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has suspended its eight-month strike. The announcement was made at the National Executive Council meeting, which was held at the ASU Secretariat in Abuja. The Academic Union embarked on strike on Monday, the 14th of February, 2022, to protest the non-implementation of the 2009 Memorandum of Understanding reached with it by the federal government. The Industrial Training Fund, in collaboration with the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, held a graduation ceremony for 70 trainees who have learned various technical skills. Stakeholders at the event says the skill acquisition program is aimed at reducing unemployment in the country. The program has been that which I would say very successful. In fact, our little research or studies have shown in terms of tracking all our graduates, we found out that 96% of them are either employed or they started something on their own. So for those that may have some little challenges, they are less than 5%. And for any project that has that kind of um, turnout in terms of expectations, I think it's something that we can say is, has been very, very successful. NECA happens to be the umbrella body of all organized private sectors in response to whether it's oil and gas, manufacturing, textile, aviation, food and beverage, you can, the list is endless. So we now had to get into that partnership that we need certain skills in certain of these sectors. At the back of our mind, that skill is the key. They can pick your certificate, they can pick your properties, but the skills and the knowledge you have can enable you to bounce back and even further on. Certification of competence was presented to students and awards to best students who offered programs in electrical electronics maintenance, mechanical machine and maintenance, automobile mechanic works, welding and fabrication works, refrigeration and air conditioning, amongst others. The National Union of Chemical, Footwear, Rubber, Leather and Non-Metallic Product Employees says it is diversifying its operations following economic realities in Nigeria. I wish to inform you that the leadership of this union saw the need to diversify and not relating on check-off deals, uh, check deals alone, thereby decided to put this guest house in place as alternative source of income to the union. The guest house that we are commissioning today is having 15 standard rooms and two small rooms that provide for serious accommodation for people. The other project is the multipurpose shopping mall, which is still under construction across the road. It is our expectation that the proceeds from this project we support the finance of the union once completed. President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC Ayuba Waba, who addressed workers in the sector, said employees across the world are contributing towards development. Comrades, it is important and significant, the event of today, because unions are workers' organization. And workers' organization need to be independent, need to also be strong, and need to also be financially independent. That is the hallmark of trade unionism around the world. And all of us could remember that trade unions started more than 150 years ago in the United Kingdom with affiliates and also the TUC UK. The workers were encouraged to create wealth globally. The organized labor in Nigeria joined other workers across the globe to celebrate this year's World Day for Decent Work. 
For over a decade, October 7th has been observed annually as a day to champion the cause to end workers' enslavement in the world of work through practices of casualization. The organized labor in Nigeria have used this year's events to picket many companies whom they alleged were casualizing their workforce as well as denied workers from joining the unions of their choice. Other unions to come and say they will free you from the captivity of these people. We are here for three days. You home. must free yourself. We are here at Egbi Power Station. And one of the problems here is there is issue of casualization here. There is issue of anti-union activity here. Workers' representatives are not recognized. Many workers don't know when to close from work. As it is entailed in the labor law, you shall only work for eight hours. But they subject people to more than eight hours that does not attract uh, over time. And here we have workforce that there is no condition of service. A lot of things is happening here. That both by the law, labor law, by our constitution, and by international labor law, is they are not known. The unions under the industrial Hall global, however, used the day to draw awareness to the plight of Nigerian workers as they marched across the city of Lagos with several placards. Industrial Hall issued ultimatum to the management of a power plant. We are giving them a mandate of an ultimatum of seven days. If these conditions and requirements are not met, I can, we are assuring them that we will return to this place in thousands. We decide to come in hundred today, believing that maybe they will see reason, believing that they may, may, they may understand. But if that is not done, we will return to the same gate in our thousands. I want to say that today we've actually made a brilliant mark because we can also see that we have a comment from inside, also showing a looter, which means that we are moving and we'll keep on strategizing. And I say once again that it is going to be victory at the end for every Nigerian man, for every Nigerian woman, and we'll keep on fighting. And I say that victory is us. It's the little Africa. Africa. Speaking on the theme which justice, a renowned economist preferred solution towards the trend of indecent work. You know what they do in other economies, right? They subsidize food, they subsidize transport, they make life easier for the worker, they increase benefits because they know if they increase salaries, the tax man will also come. Leverage the media, social, social media, traditional media. We, meet, we need your help colleagues in this fight to prove to the world and to the employers of labor that wage justice is important. Following the issue of inflation in Nigeria and the devaluation of the Naira, many Nigerian workers are hopeful that there would be a general minimum wage increase. I think the way we can achieve wage justice is to insist on workplace democratic approach to fixing wages, especially in the private sector. We needed to insist that workers should have the right to collective bargaining. The right to collective bargaining, which will involve all aspect of wage to be negotiated with the representative of uh, the workers and representative of employers so that all the variables, all the situational variables will be taken into consideration and consensually agreed upon, then we can say we will have a equitable just wage. How anything outside that, it will be a unilateral uh, um, uh, 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 action and any unilateral action in terms of a fixing of wages cannot uh, be said to be a wage, it's just wage. Uh, workers in the industry across board 
uh, should be able to earn a, a living wage and not just a minimum wage to be able to uh, the workers should be uh, should be uh, motivated uh, in the areas of wages and salary and then in the areas of uh, health and safety in a workplace and so that workers can also work in a place where uh, there will be no molestation they work free and then in their minimum wage and so that they will be able to have a minimum living wage in a way of dealing with um, work uh, this end day. On the profile interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the national president of ASBIFI, Comrade Oin Consola Ola Soonye. She brings us up to speed on several challenges workers are faced towards achieving decent work across the world. She also emphasized on the need for federal government to ensure that there are more inspectorates to ensure that workplaces are safe for all. It's good to have you on the program. Good afternoon. It's been a while that we've had a conversation and a lot has been happening in the labor sector. Most recent of it all is the decent work day. And um, the union you represent as BFI is big on this day in terms of ensuring that um, you lecture people in the industry, which, which uh, would be the industry players, your members, and Nigerian workers at large. Um, can you bring us up to speed on why it's essential for Decent Work Day to be celebrated by Nigerians and also by your union? Uh, thank you. Our union uh, started celebrating what decent, what decent Work Day since over 10 years ago, precisely 10 years ago, uh, because we felt that um, for us to be able to have a dignified world of work, we must have a decent work. And uh, the option we decided to take is a sort of seminar training, inviting professionals to come, and uh, we look at various areas, various topics that are of concern to the financial sector, and we discuss it. So for us, it has become a yearly event. And uh, after all this discussion, we do a sort of memo, uh, a memorandum, a uh, write-up on it and send it to all our members and all our employers in the industry so that they can look at areas of concern this year. Then for the next few months, that's the area we'll work on. Talking about your sector, which is the bank uh, and financial institution sector, recently you also announced that um, there is a new um, employment guidelines um, which is supposed to guide employers in your sector. Um, can you bring us up to speed why it's important to have these employment guidelines for banks and financial institutions at this time? Basically, the issue of casualization and outsourcing of workers. Uh, you know, uh, the current Labor Act has been in existence for some time. It has not been perfectly reviewed. There have been review going on. So which makes, makes it clear that there are some specific areas of it that did not put into consideration the current world of work. Uh, but the same Labor Act made provision in Section 88 that the Honorable Minister of Labor can provide guidelines when he notice any gap pending when there will be a review of the Labor Act. Uh, in our sector of reason, there have been a lot of outsourcing. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, casual workers, non-permanent workers. And uh, we have looked at it that everybody says all of us as bank workers. But their remuneration, their condition of service, uh, their career paths, uh, their HESIT package, all this one will have not been considered. So we have to go into an agreement, into a lot of discussion with the Nigerian Employer Constitution Council, uh, the employers in our sector, and also the company that is being licensed for outsourcing that match our industry, and look at all these areas that are of concern to us. Uh, and of also concern because we realize that um, any workers in, a, in, a financial, in the financial sector, because of the peculiarity of our sector that is disgruntled, uh, it is easy for them to be law into uh, unnecessary and un unethical practices. So we decide that it is better. We are workers in Nigeria. We must be able to operate in the same sector and enjoy the same thing in the same sector. That's why we decide to go into this, to negotiate with them. Uh, at least we, also, we are also able to put, as part of the document, uh, um, uh, collective bargaining so that it won't be like individuals that are negotiating. We are trying to empower them 
so that they'll be bold enough uh, in a season like this to be able to talk about their career path, their employer, their wages, their remuneration, their exit package, their condition of service, disciplinary procedure, and uh, dispute resolution. These are the things we put in place. Okay, with these um, guidelines, um, of what advantage do you think this would also be for employers of labor with your experience and also the complaints that you might have received from workers in the sector? Yeah, thank you. Let me start even from the whole Nigerian. Uh, there have been a lot of apathy and mistrust toward um, having some money in the bank of recent. There have been a lot of people that believe that the scamming and the fraudulent practices are practiced by workers in the sector. And uh, yes, with due respect to everybody in the sector, they, it may not be 100% workers in the sector that are practicing this, but we are also mindful that when we have disgruntled workers, it is easier for scammers to use them as Trojan horse to get information and work into the system. But by putting this in place, when all everybody feel happy to work in the sector, when they now decide to put ethics and the professionalism of the sector into the application of their duties. It means that the Nigerian, the Nigerian populace that are saving their money in the bank will have more confidence. There will be lesser issues in that area. Even the, the, the service, uh, the customer service will improve because everybody will now be happy in the sector. Now also for the employer, for the employees, it, 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 because in the sector as a present, when we have full-time workers, the permanent workers, as a sort of guide to the non-permanent workers, if anything happens to the permanent worker, it affects all of us. So it means we too, we are at peace that, there is, that those that we are in charge of have something that is guiding them. So we are at peace, the permanent workers. The non-permanent workers are also at peace now that their length of service, their experience can count for them. And their remuneration is something that can now take them at least to the bus stop if we don't take them up, because as a present, their wages is nothing to write them about. So now for the employers too, they are now at peace because uh, there will be lesser uh, risk in the sector. There will be more, there'll be more customer, there will be more productivity, and more customer will be able to come in because now everybody can trust us. So now the competition between the real uh, banking hall, between and the ATM machines, and the agents, and the POS managers, the relationship is more cordial because everybody now has something to be proud of, is that they are now working in the financial sector. Okay, talking about wage justice, um, with your experience, uh, wealth of experience in the labor se um, sector, uh, would you say that um, there is wage justice? Looking also at the fact that we're having the challenge of inflation, we are as also having the NERA, that um, value depreciating. From your experience, would you say that there is even decent work in Nigeria at the moment? Uh, thank you. The condition of workers at present is not conducive enough for Nigerian workers. But uh, a lot of people have challenged those of us in the labor sector that we are selfish. We are always asking for salary increase. Uh, but I let, I, one thing I've made clear to everybody is that why we keep on asking for wage justice is because uh, the situation, if government can put in place uh, a public service that the little salary we are handing will be enough to do a lot, then there won't be reason for us to keep on clamoring cam on wage justice. As a present, what I have in mind, what I mean is this, as a present, you pay very high price to put your children in school. You pay very high price to go for health services. You pay very high prices even to put your vehicle on the road. That's why the government is charging us for road maintenance. We should be the person charging government for car maintenance. You also, you also provide electricity for yourself. Don't forget that there is also no, no social protection in place. What I'm saying in essence is that welfareism in Nigeria is zero. So definitely the little we are being paid, for example, the minimum wage as a present is 30,000. And if you look at 30,000, even the, a one-room apartment cannot cost less than 10,000. 
A normal Nigerian worker will spend nothing less than 1,000 naira because we live, majority of us live in the suburb. So going to the mainland where our offices are, you should budget at least 1,000 naira for 20 working days in a month. That is 20,000. Plus house rent. Most house rent now with the cost of the inflation and everything, you will pay at least 10,000. The 30,000 is already spent without food, without some other basic necessities, without health care, without provision for your children going to school. These are the reasons that we keep on talking about wage justice. And we need government to look at the profit of the capitalist. That is, it is no longer necessary that we should, we should encourage them to make a lot of profit while the workers are silently dying. And this they have been doing because in Nigeria as a present, they have been under employment and unemployment. So everybody is desperate, even if at a cost to you, even to your health, to maintain your job. So if we look at it all around, there are so many issues at stake. We are just going to work and nobody will be producing and giving enough of their time to increase the productivity of this company. So it's about all of us. It's about the country. It's about the employer. It's about the employee. Until we together come together and look at the wage justice, then that is, is a fair wage that motivates somebody to be productive enough and to go to workplace, there will be crisis in the country. Still talking about the economic um, side of the country, um, with your with your experience as a financial expert, um, would there be any advice um, that you would give to the government in terms of ensuring that um, probably there is stability in the economy, which in turn will mean more profit for the employers of labor and also probably more money will be in circulation for the employees themselves? You see, consumption leads to more productivity. If we are asking for an increase in productivity without increasing consumption, it doesn't flow. Then how do you increase consumption when the wages is not enough? You don't have the purchasing power. So government needs to look at it. Uh, you, you, there have been a lot of policies, some assault. For example, uh, before now, Nigerians that have little money, maybe from retirement benefit or from savings, want to keep it in an account. There was interest from the bank. So they are sure there is something that their capital is growing. But when government, by the time the interest rate collapse, government and everybody expect everybody to go to small scale businesses. Going to small scale businesses uh, for, a, for a, a new entrepreneur, a small scale and medium scale entrepreneur is not worth it. Because uh, the cost of diesel, the cost of doing business, the cost of electricity, the cost of um, paying wages and everything. So, it, 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 it makes it difficult for a normal Nigerian worker to have multiple streams of income because our, 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 our interest should, be, should also be something we can generate income from. So as long as we're having this issue, government must do everything possible to, give the purchasing, to increase the purchasing power of Nigerian workers. When the purchasing power is increased, then, the, then the, 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 uh, it, it will help them also to increase their consumption. And when consumption is increased, it will add productivity in the companies. And by the time this one will boom around, it will also lead to increase in taxation for government, both from the consumer to the company that is increasing productivity. So government need to look into this. Because if we are concentrating on, uh, on companies making profit, we are not taxing this. We, we don't have capital, serious capital gain and serious wealth taxation in Nigeria. So it means when most of these companies have this, their profit, the taxation is also only for them. Why the payee will also affect those that are, should have the consumption power. So we, 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 my appeal to government is that they should look at it all around and see that we need to um, create more employment. And even the few one that is as a present, that there should be a decent in it. It should be a decent work. And decent work cannot be decent. No work can be decent except there is a wage justice. Hmm. Wage justice, wage justice. Um, if we look at it from the um, government side, while some state governments have refused to even implement um, the consequential adjustments which arose from the increase in minimum wage, we have a state like Lagos that recently announced the um, increase in minimum wage. Do you think other state governments are supposed to take a cue from that, looking at the economic situation that we find ourselves in the country. Uh, thank you. You know, like uh, there is an adage in the Labour Palace 
when you pay with peanuts, you end up with monkeys. As long as the wages all the states are paying are not enough, they can't have the necessary uh, contribution in toward their GDPs expected from the workers. As, and they can't have the necessary and the needed tax because you can only tax me on based on what I am doing. Which also means that the informal sectors are more dependent on the few workers than being dependent on themselves. So I will appeal to, I will say thank you and congratulate Lagos State. Lagos State have done something I call win-win. They have been able to create happy employees while also I know that there will be something back in need for them. Because the, 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 the consumption rate in Lagos State will increase. It will affect all the populace. And I know because the tax will also a bit goes up. When other states felt that we don't have this money, it also make those states not to be buoyant enough like the states that are paying these minimum wages. So I will appeal to all states that we, if we can cut down the cost of governance, then the, the, the little wealth that are available in this state, we go to more people than as are present when it's only few, select, few ones that are benefiting from the, from the income and the sources of the states. So it is better and it is advisable for all states that they need to do the right thing. Because the right thing is like in a circle. It goes round and it comes round. But when it's only few people in the society that have the money to go around, most especially the politicians, then definitely it, all these people also will not have the necessary peace they need because everybody will still come to them. So we need it to make sure that all these states make sure that almost everybody has this source of income. Increase the wages because everybody has their own dependence. Then it will, it will give everybody peace and there will be more consumption in the state to increase productivity. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijason. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.